The Chancellor, George Osborne, is asking Chinese companies to bid for contracts on Britain's high-speed two rail line. They're worth nearly £12 billion and include work on bridges, tunnels and ground clearance. But critics say it's too early to open the bidding because laws paving the way for the project haven't been passed by Parliament yet. Our political correspondent Carol Walker reports. George Osborne hailed a golden era of cooperation with China as he toured the country, inviting Chinese companies to bid for HS2 contracts worth £11.8 billion. He said it was a major milestone for a project which the government says will help rebalance the British economy. So we now need to get on and build this. And we're offering today the contracts for laying the track, 11 billion pounds of contracts, and we're saying let's have the best bids from around the world, hopefully partnering with British firms. But you know, when you come to China, you realize the scale of the ambition here. It's the biggest infrastructure project in Europe to provide high-speed rail links from London to the Midlands and the North, but it is hugely controversial, and Parliament has yet to give its final approval. If an infrastructure project like this goes ahead, and after all we've got an awful lot of infrastructure projects in the pipeline, what is really key is that it is done in the best possible way. And what I'm particularly concerned about if it does eventually go ahead is that we protect the environment as much as we can against the intrusion of HS2. MPs backed HS2 in principle last year, but the House is a very different place since the election and it's far from certain the bill will get through Parliament unscathed. The new Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn, is amongst those who've opposed HS2 in the past. What time's the train? <laughs> Mr Corbyn says Labour would re-nationalise the railways, which could deter some potential investors. But his new transport spokeswoman says the party will continue to support the HS2 project. Jeremy's uh, been clear, and I, I said this in the House only last week, is uh, we su he supports high-speed rail, I support high-speed rail, and the Labour Party supports uh, the continued development of HS2. But the Shadow Chancellor John McDonnell also voted against HS2, and opponents believe party policy may not be settled. Jeremy's only been leader for, what, all of a week, so I need to have a conversation with him. But I trust him to listen to the arguments against the scheme and make a decision accordingly. So I don't know what his position is. I know the Labour line has always been to support high-speed rail too, but we have a new leader now. HS2 is a key part of the Chancellor's plan for what he calls a northern powerhouse, boosting the economy and creating jobs in the north of England. But construction is not due to start for another two years and legal challenges and other protests could still delay his ambitious plans. Carol Walker, BBC News. Let's talk to our assistant political editor Norman Smith in Westminster. Plenty of disquiet about this on all kinds of levels. The politics around this, Sophie, have absolutely not been sorted out, never mind getting parliamentary approval, in part because of the wild card, if you like, of Jeremy Corbyn becoming Labour leader. Now, he has always opposed high-speed rail. Just last month, he said it would turn northern cities into dormitories for London business. His shadow chancellor described it as a project going nowhere. And although his transport team says he will now back the scheme, there are Labour MPs who frankly doubt that. But more than that, there is the huge uncertainty of the impact of Mr Corbyn's plans to nationalise the railways, including HS2, on what investors do. Because when people are investing billions in massive projects, the one thing they want, above all, is certainty. And the idea that down the line under a Labour government the line could be nationalised creates a huge element of uncertainty. On top of that, there are MPs who are unhappy that Mr Osborne seems to be launching the tendering for HS2 in China, the argument being, why doesn't he do it in Britain? Why not give a sort of nod and a wink to British companies and British engineers? Mr Osborne's response, the Chinese know how to build high-speed rail lines, they've got the cash, and he wants to build better economic ties with the Chinese. But you sense if Mr Osborne's to get the green light for high-speed rail, he may need to spend more time in the Commons convincing MPs than trying to woo Chinese investors.